There's a lot of people that, 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 that work tireless hours to make this show what it is. Uh, we just happen to be the two faces that you see the most of. Um, unfortunately, sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> unfortunately, they don't get nearly the praise that they deserve because without them, we would just be two out of work actors. So. Speaking of the preparation, uh, the scripts uh, that come in before you read, uh, you get a script. Uh, Are you German? Uh, no, I'm uh, German, Russian, Italian. And so when, German, 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 Russian, Italian? Yes, okay. what, 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 but I'm little in South Africa too, so... Um, what, what percentage of each? Well, mostly German and Indian and Russian, but a little bit of South Russian. You are Indian, man. And uh, also uh, some uh, Iranian. So, uh, uh, when you read uh, the final, uh, the finale, the last script, uh, <clears throat> script uh, uh, for this uh, season, season 12. Yeah, 12 um, well, how many, how many hours did you hold each other and cry? <laughs> it's, funny, it's funny you should ask. Thank, you for, thank you for your question, um, German, Indian, Russian, Italian, um, <laughs> South <laughs> African, South African. <laughs> It's funny because the last week of filming, I was actually uh, I was actually sick the last week of filming. I don't know what happened. It might have been we stayed with a buddy of ours, uh, this guy named Misha. He plays Castiel. And I remember reading the the end of the going. I got to, I remember the, reading the end and it literally just burst out into tears. No, of laughter. And, And I thought, how much fun is season 13 going to be? I mean, talk about cutting the fat. So, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, really, this is a me, Misha, here. Oh, oh, ladies and gentlemen. So Misha has a funny story to tell you guys. Um, we shot, so the last, for those who have seen the finale, you can listen, for those who have not, um, close your ears. We shot the last three days of season 12. It was a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, April 26th, 27th, something like that. And we shot like halfway to Whistler. And so it was a long drive. Uh, uh, it was a long drive, so Misha decided to rent a house, like a VRBO house, right? And he's like, hey guys, listen, I... And okay, so just a pre preface, this was a moment of poor decision making. This moment that he's about to describe to you. I'm sure it seemed like a great idea at the time. Uh, and so he says like, hey, Jens and Jared, I know we're filming all day. It was night shooting, so all the stuff that takes place outside of the house, for those who have seen it. Um, it was all Monday, like, we started like 3 a.m., or 3 p.m. Monday, went to 5 a.m., started at uh, 4 p.m. Tuesday, went to... It was awful. It was awful. It was night shooting, and Misha was like, hey, instead of driving back and forth and being exhausted, I rented a house, so I didn't have to do the four-hour drive uh, round trip. If y'all just want to crash there, like, it's a three-bedroom, four-bedroom, whatever. And we were like, that'd be cool, man. We haven't seen a whole lot of him this season, because he works, like, two episodes a year. Um, <laughs> It was a four bedroom. It was a four bedroom? Is what we were told. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we were told five. That was a little bit of a bait and switch. I was like, guys, I've got this ble huge place. Might as well come, st come stay. And then Jensen went, you, you got up early. He played some golf. He went early to throw his bag in. And he's like, how many bedrooms did you say this place had? Because it was two bedrooms? At most. At most. That's stretching it. It was two bedrooms. One of the. I ended up sleeping on the floor. He slept on the floor next to his. He slept on the floor next to his. <laughs> the bed that he slept in. I don't know what happened. I was in the other room. <laughs> you, were, you were resting after, after what we'd been through. Um, <laughs> So yeah, 
yeah, so we filmed till like three or four. Uh, How much of this story are we going to tell? We're you telling all of it. We're editing as we go. We right? should tell it. Dude. Not all of it. I think we're, you know what guys, I think that's it for us. Uh, I, think we're, I think we're done. I think we got to go. Yeah. Uh, and we were, we were so close. Danielle is telling us we got to go. Uh, no, not before the story ends. So I get upstairs <laughs> in the morning. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll delay a little bit for y'all. Fuck it. <laughs> so Misha, Misha invites us over. We, we end up going like, they're, they're thinking it's going to be like a short day. That by short we mean like 3 p.m. to 2 a.m. Like, oh, it's only an 11 hour day, it's going to be brilliant. It ends up going like 5. And so we go back to Misha's place. And we're like, hey, this is like a send off for season 12. Let's open a bottle of wine, have a few beers, whatever. And so we hung out and had a few drinks and kind of chatted on the, um, there was like a patio overlooking the Chief, which is this beautiful mountain. Um, after we realized that there were very little places to sleep in this place, we were then like, well, I guess we should probably just stay up. <laughs> so we stayed up and then went to bed. Um, <laughs> I do remember at one point being, <laughs> being in the other room. Being awoke a woke by <laughs> just, Yeah, it was They're like, what are they doing in there? Have they brought in animals now? And <laughs> Like I said, I was sick. Jared was oh, no. snoring so loud it that from so down the hall in a closed door bedroom, it woke me up. And I'm like, how is Misha possibly sleeping in the same room? <laughs> oh, he had, he had been put to the test that before. He, uh, <laughs> he didn't sleep through anything. <laughs> no, he woke up for... <laughs> When you nudged him. Um. <laughs> You're all like, what's well, true and what's not? <laughs> I want to believe. No. So. <laughs> we, we wake up. We wake up and it's all like, uh, we, we fell too late, we stayed too late. And so um, the phone, so Misha has rented this house. VRBO or something, home away. So he puts it's it all phone. under his name. It's all under his name. So the phone, the home phone rings. So rate. stupid. So, so, so Jared, me, actually, I love to refer to himself in the third person. I come upstairs to find Jared on the phone after the phone had been ringing. So this is the house phone. The phone that belongs to, fill to, fill to the home. To fill that the is not Misha's or us. Or the house way. phone rings, and I'm like, <laughs> Hello? And the other guy's like, hey, Virgil. I'm like, this is Virgil. Yes, this is Virgil. Virgil's the here. actual owner of the home. Yeah, I'm sitting with Mark, and Mark wants to cancel his lease a couple months early. It means we'll have to loan off the hook, but we have another lease coming in. We think, I'm like, pull the trigger. No, I'm like, well, hey, 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 yeah, hey, 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 no, no, go ahead and do it. Sign it. Uh, this is Virgil. Sign on my behalf. Sign on my behalf. And so the, guy, the guy's like, cool, man. Well, we'll just send the papers. And Misha's grabbing the phone. Finally, it like flies out of both of our hands. It's a wall. glass, breaks a glass. <laughs> There's the sound of me going, no! Glass breaking, me grabbing the phone and hanging it up. And that's how the call ended. So, so it's, yeah, great, go ahead, sign on my yeah, behalf. Yeah, go ahead, sign on my behalf. No! That's fantastic. We've got Roy here to witness it. Yep, thanks, Roy. Okay, bye. I couldn't believe the police didn't show up after that. <laughs> and then the phone rings again. No, 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 when was the computer? When was your the computer? The phone rings again. Oh, I, yeah. I run downstairs. I run downstairs, right? I don't know. I lost the sequence. It's you went to... At some point, I, I did... When was your computer open? I left my computer open. I went downstairs. That's when he started tweeting something about... He me. jumps up, runs over to the computer, starts Immediately. tweeting. Then you hear Misha coming sprinting back upstairs as though he just I realized that I the computer was available. I ran downstairs to unplug the, the phone. 
so that like no more incoming calls would come into the house. And as I'm coming back upstairs, I'm like, oh. I like in slow motion because of course Jared is sitting there on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was like retweeting Donald Trump, like, couldn't agree more. Yeah. You're the best. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and, so, and, so, and now Misha's like, ugh, okay, I have my phone. I, I have the house phone. I have my computer. Gonna, it was, I'm meanwhile, gonna... it was the best morning cup of coffee entertainment I've ever had. <laughs> I'm just sitting there at the table, like. And so then it's time to shower. He was trying to get ready for work, and so, um... <laughs> Keep in mind, this is like a, a very nice house. It's been, like, architectured, and it's very beautiful home, pretty new. Um, and so, the phone is unplugged, Misha has taken back over his Twitter, and so he goes to shower, get ready for work, whatever, and I'm upstairs, and I'm like, I'm gonna turn on CNN, like, whatever. And I'm going, it's like a weird, it's some unusual Canadian satellite system I'm not used to, so CNN's not the same channel, so I'm like flipping through channels, and it gets to, like, boys in the shower. Or something, boys in their butts, or something like that, seven. And I was like, huh. And I pushed forward. That piqued your interest? <laughs> yeah, Misha's on the bill, man. He picked, and to be specific, he, he, he selected subscribe. Yeah. Which was very assuming, 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 in all fairness, that the homeowner wouldn't rent his house out to people without putting a block on pay-per-view. But he didn't. He didn't want his pay-per-view. And so he, he subscribed, well, Misha, the tenant, subscribed to, uh, it was like, boys, handsome butts. It was very, sex or something. very, very, very graphic bathroom sex. Yeah. Um, and, and I believe you you, sub, you subscribed like to the yeah, like the forever. It was an and annual it's very, annual it's subscription. Very, in all fairness, they were offering a deal at the time. <laughs> I spent thirty bucks a month, two hundred. Yeah. They 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 left before me for work, and I spent almost two hours trying to unsubscribe. <laughs> Unsuccessfully, I could not unsubscribe because I didn't have the password that he had created. <laughs> Am I staying? transition where you're uh, like me on stage alone and that means half of the people leave. Jared and Jensen up, and the very, very graphic bathroom sex was playing <laughs> on the screen, and, uh, and at that point, we were just sitting on the couch, like this, watching, and, and, uh, and Cliff came in and sat down, and was like, hey guys, we gotta, you know, gotta get going, and he sat there for about two minutes before realizing what was on the screen, and it was sort of like a... seen the uh, finale of this season? Okay. All right. And how many have seen it? Good. All right. All right. 
Are we are we avoiding uh, spoilers on no. this? No. Okay. Did anyone just say yes? No. <laughs> the yeses are getting drowned out by the noes. Um. Yeah, that was an intense uh, end of end of the season, huh? Yeah. yeah a lot of uh, carnage. Um, Thank you. Um, great. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Okay. What? What? I wanted to know how Cass' idea of home has changed during the years and the seasons. His idea of, of home? home. Um, I think Cass has gone from seeing heaven as his home to being homeless. Because I don't think I don't think that Cass ever feels at home um, anywhere, really. I think that he he now feels uh, somewhat comfortable with the boys, but he's never he's never in his own element, really. Um, <clears throat> He does see them as the closest thing he has to family, I think. Um, and they say home is where the heart is. So, so maybe you know, maybe with the boys is is, is as close as it gets for him. Um, but he's still never, he's still never truly at home. I don't think. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So life has gotten much worse for him over the course of well, now actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hi. Hi. Um, I hope you're enjoying your stay here and good fun during your trip in Iceland. I did. Are you, are you Icelandic? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, so I can tell you this. I tried the shark, the fermented shark. Um, I guess they take a shark, they bury it uh, in the sand for six weeks, and, and it rot the meat kind of rots a little bit, and the urine from the the, the shark's body soaks into the meat and helps preserve it. Sounds disgusting. <laughs> it was challenging, really challenging. Um, I thought I'd just pop it in, it was like a relatively small piece, I'd just pop it in my mouth to be polite and get it over with, but it was like a little bit too big to just swallow right away. So then I had to chew it for a long time, but it was like really sinewy, and I started sweating. <laughs> And I was like, I was determined not to spit it out. But now I'm getting the chills just thinking about the fact that it went into my body. So that was probably a bad choice. So uh, I have a question, but first I wanted to tell you just a little thing. Okay. Um, you have recently reached 100 episodes on Supernatural, and it's amazing. Thank you. And, so, yeah, congratulations. Thank you. And if someone thinks that Cass is not important for the show, or you're not, I don't really know what show they are watching because you and your character are fundamental for the show. Thank you. I wish for you and... Oh my goodness. <laughs> I feel so strange, like I want to give you a hug about, the, uh, about this poor, fictitious character. No. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I do it. Um, look, here's what I'm going to say about um, Castiel's um, recent Recent unfortunate events um, <laughs> on Supernatural. Um, I, I, I think that um, I think I'll I think I'll be back on uh, Supernatural um, in season thirteen. Um, I think um, I think we will see Cass again, but the question is what this death does to him um, is, you know, uh, is, I think, the one to wonder about, you know. In, 
in Supernatural, um, a, a, a character's death cannot mark a, a big sort of transition point for them. Um, and and I think that, you know, I think we'll, we'll, what we need to wait and see is like how, how this transforms him. Um, but I, I do think we'll see a version of him again. There's also this, this parallel universe in which uh, possibly everyone is alive in a different iteration. Um, so, you know, you never know. And, uh, yeah, so the question is, um, I love your face. <laughs> She's like, yeah, that wasn't my question. Um, but, <laughs> thanks for usurping my time at the mic. I love your family. So what's the favorite thing you like to do with your children? Um, uh, that's a good question. Um, I really like just following their lead on things and letting them sort of you know, take charge on something. I like going on little adventures with them, like we'll go into the park for uh, a hike to try to find bugs or something like that. And we'll bring all kinds of tools to find bugs, like big nets and long poles and things that are heavy and completely useless. Um, so I like doing stuff with them like that. And I like, uh, <clears throat> I like when they say, strange the strange things that children say and ask the questions that they ask because they are little reminders that um that the world is full of wonder to new eyes um my my daughter uh just asked um uh hey if i can i wear can i wear pants when i have a baby and West said, no, Mason, because then the baby would just get caught in your pants and get squished. <laughs> and Mason said, oh. And then, and then West said, hey, how do babies get made anyway? <laughs> and, um, and Vicky was like, well, it's, you know, the man and a woman, when they, they, they can put very special love together, uh, and they do a really... <laughs> I don't know why she got like 1950s about this, but she said, uh, you know, they do a very special kind of hug. And, uh, and Wes said, I think I know what kind of hug that is. It's a naked hug. Um, <laughs> anyway. Just wanted to know if you listen to Pink Floyd songs, and if you do, um, what is your favorite song? Uh, I don't know about the, the wall. You know? Yeah. 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 Uh, what about you? I like One of These Days and High Hopes. That's mm -hmm. my favorite mm -hmm. choice. Mm -hmm. Good choices. <laughs> yeah. um, I should. I, I. I have to put. It's been a little bit of time since I've been um, listening to Pink Floyd. I've got to put it back in in circulation. Um, Okay, thank you for the tip. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is about what's your skill um, Oops. <laughs> yes. Um, specifically about that item that required us to donate to help Syrian refugees. Um, that had quite an impact on myself, so I was wondering what was the impact on you and what was your experience? <laughs> um, so, how many of you have done Gishwitz? Yes. Those of you who haven't, you should try it at least once. I think you'll love it. Um, you, can, you can sign up now. We're doing registration now, and you can either sign up by yourself, or you can join a team. Um, we'll put you on a team if you don't have a team. Uh, or you can ask people who just put their hands up, and maybe they'll let you join their team. Um, we, did this, um, <clears throat> we did this item last year, um, in I think it was maybe on a, on Wednesday or something. It was sort of part way through the hunt, and it said get ten people, I believe, to donate to this um, to this fundraiser to raise money for this Syrian refugee family. We had found this family living in Lebanon. The mother had been shot in the spine and paralyzed, and she had been stuck in this tent for two years. Had not been out of the tent in two years. 
Um, and the kids in the, in the family were in really dire circumstances as well. So we put this item in the hunt. And we didn't want to make it so that you had to donate if you were playing Gishwiz, but we made it so that you had to find other people to donate. So that was the challenge for this item. And we, we thought, you know, if we can raise, if we can raise somewhere between forty and fifty thousand dollars that will pay for them to get a house that will pay for them to get the kids in school and that will pay for the mom to get some medical attention um, and and that will pay for them for for several years so in the morning we woke up and there was already sixty thousand dollars which was like enough to take care of them for five years and so we got on the phone to this um, amazing photographer named uh, Giles Dooley who's, who uh, lost three limbs to an IED and so he only has one functioning uh, fully functioning arm and yet he still travels around the world doing um, photo documentation of refugees in refugee camps um, just an incredible person and he <clears throat> he had told us about this family because he had done a story about them two years before and he was really um, I mean, even Angelina, he, Angelina Jolie had interviewed him about this family. Like, it got, it got a ton of exposure. And yet, that family was still living in the same shitty situation. Even though it had gotten press all over the world because he had reported on it, this, this family had had nothing change for them. And he was feeling really depressed about this um, because he felt like, what's the point of, of my work? What's the point of telling these stories if telling the story doesn't change the circumstances of the people that I'm talking about. And so he was overjoyed to find out that we had finally gotten the money to get them into a totally different circumstances. And then he found another family for us, another family that had a heartbreaking story. The daughter in the family tried to kill herself twice because she wanted there to be enough food for the other kids in the family. And we got enough money for them and another family and another family, and it was just amazing. And it felt so, for me, you asked how I felt about it, it felt incredibly profound and also extremely exciting because I love the idea of turning, uh, doing good into a game so that we can actually have two different kinds of joy from the experience. One is the fun of playing a game, and the other is the deep gratification that you get knowing that you've actually materially changed someone's life. Um, so the idea of bringing those two things together and having it actually work, I mean, a lot of times <clears throat> I feel like I'm, I have this sort of personality that says, yeah, let's try this crazy thing. And sometimes it doesn't work at all, and a lot of times I, I'm sort of asking people to trust me when they shouldn't. Um, but when, when something like that happens and it actually works out, um, it's, it feels really lucky and, and, and thrilling. So I felt great about it, uh, to answer your question. And we're now getting the photos from these kids moving into their new apartments that, that Gishwiz and Random Acts facilitated. And the girl, the 12-year-old who tried to kill herself is now saying that she wants to be a doctor when she grows up, which is amazing. Thank you. Hiya. Hi. Um, I just want to say you're amazing in the season finale. I was like at the airport trying to keep it together. I was in public. Yeah, I lie. I lie very still. <laughs> Quotes you don't want on the internet. Um, yes. Thank you. My question was, I'm going to like Vancouver and the West Coast of America in July, and I was wondering what your favorite things to do and what you would like recommend going seeing. Um, hmm. Well, I, I think uh, you should probably go out to the islands, the San Juans, oh, yeah. or the uh, the what are the Canadian islands called? Gulf Islands. Gulf Islands. Thank you. Um, those are pretty beautiful. It's actually kind of like the most beautiful place in America at that time of the year. Um, you can see killer whales. Um, yeah. We, 
we had a Gishwiz item a couple of years ago, which which was set in the San Juan Islands. You had to you had to get take a ferry to another ferry to an island, Lopez Island, where there was this kid, this 19 year old kid that I had met, who who made ice cream sundaes at this yeah. restaurant. Uh, Alex Guido was his name, and he made these sundaes that were really big, but he was also like really super super proud of them, and he. Uh, he was basically challenging anybody who came in and ordered his Sunday to actually finish the whole thing. And if they did, he would raise their hand up in the air like they were like a champion. And I just thought this was hilarious. And so I put that as an item in the hunt, like get an Alex Guido Sunday and get um, and, and, and have him declare you a victor over the Sunday. And then, um, and then he, I remember distinctly, he did not have a driver's license. Um, and there were so many people coming to the island, and the ferry was like seven miles away. And so he, he started, he borrowed somebody's car and started driving people to and from the ferry. And then he got pulled over by a cop and got a very expensive ticket for driving without a license. Uh, and then he got fired. Um, so that worked out great. Sort of like the Syrian refugee story. Um, uh, <laughs> So not, not always do things go perfectly, but then uh, I, I, I heard later that he, he wanted to quit anyway, and Gishwa's people actually raised money for him to pay for his, for his ticket as well, so it worked out in the end. Um, we helped him transition into a better career. <laughs> he was too good for that place. Awesome. thank yeah. you. Bye. Bye. So, um... This is when you had a lot, a lot of emotional uh, scenes, and they were actually really spectacular. I really love your acting. So, how does how, is it easy to leave that uh, back and say, What's happening? I'm, I'm having some trouble with this this paparazzi down here. <laughs> okay, keep carry on. I'm sorry. Did you listen to anything? I didn't listen to anything. <laughs> Just that, um, <laughs> uh, that you had a, a lot of emotional scenes and they were really uh, powerful and if they make us, the fans, uh, feel this um, heartbroken uh, when we see it, is it easy for you to actually leave it back on set and go back to your life when it has such emotional scenes? Um. <laughs> No photos, no photos, no photos. Um, the, uh, there, I think there are times when you feel a little bit of a, of a residual um, emotional kind of trauma from particularly hard scenes. Um, we have a lot of experience um, of, of like just going back and forth and we, you know, we feel comfortable in the, <laughs> in the environment um, on set and we can we can basically um, create uh, a switch I don't know it, so it's easy it's easy sort of to toggle back and forth between being even in a very emotional state and um, and just you know fucking around on set but Experiences and there have definitely been times on uh, and actually I should say it's also different for different actors like I've seen we've seen we've had guest stars who come on who um, Who get like into an emotional state and they stay there all day, which you know looks very hard to me um, but there are also um, Particular scenes that stand out that just make you feel a little bit more Desiccated and raw at the end um, <laughs> Um, I believe it was when I was like 
dying on the couch in that barn? Yeah. Was that well, that too? Episode 12. Was that 11 or 12? 12. What was 19? <laughs> uh, it was with the power up. Okay. With Dagon. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh well. I know uh, stuff. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was that was like a that was that was a little tough that scene. Yeah. Um, For there, us too. <laughs> there, um, I'm trying to think of a of a time when I had a hard time leaving it. Um, I did this movie Carla, oh. where uh, we're getting it, it's an awful, terrible movie. Don't watch it. But <laughs> but that character got into my head in a way that made me a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. I thought I might have broken myself. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi, Andrew. Uh, Super Nice World changed a lot in the, all these years. And my question is, uh, which was the episode that, in your opinion, uh, transformed more your character of Castro? Um. <clears throat> <laughs> that is a difficult question. Um, I think that I think that Cass um, becoming human probably was the biggest transformation for the character in the long term because I think that that gave him. I think before that he didn't. He just couldn't understand how humans were like they were, and then he had this experience that gave him a lot of empathy toward humans. Um, so I think, I think that was probably, I think that was probably the biggest moment for him. Um, I thought it was uh, the trip at the strip club thing. <laughs> no. That was transformative as well. <laughs> um, if nothing else, to really show Cass that he did not have game. Um, <clears throat> that was a good, that was a good episode for me as an actor, I'll tell you that much. We had this scene, I've, I've told this story before, but we had this um, scene in the strip club and Castiel had a beer and I thought, oh, you know what would be... <laughs> I guess we're not supposed to talk about that one. Um, so Cass had a beer and I thought, you know what would be funny, like Cass has never had a beer before, he doesn't really know what to do here, so I just like kind of chugged the whole pint in one go. And we did one take, and then we did another take, <laughs> and then we did another take, and I was like, oh, whoa, this is getting hard. Like, I don't know how much more of this I can do. And then we did another take, and I was starting to feel it like right here. And then, and then we did another take, and the director said, oh, Misha, that's hilarious. What you just did with the beer, do that again. <laughs> Because the camera hadn't fucking been on me. <laughs> so the first four pints of beer that I drank were just to, just to practice. <laughs> the camera didn't see it at all. I felt really sick. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. you. No. Oh, no. No. Okay, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for being so lovely, um, and we will uh, be seeing a lot of you over the next couple of days. Bye.